You know what? I've decided I'm going to go all in. We're going to buy a new ship. I wanted around 5000 before doing that, so I had money left over for upgrades and still enough left over to be able to buy prospects and things like that. Actually, now that I think about it, I probably want more like six or 7000 but that shouldn't be a problem because I have a lot of things just taking up space in the bank. Look here, I got 24 barrels of unseasoned hours. Uh, I have six bronze woods. Bunch of crockery, sacks of verdant seeds. A lot of things that I just haven't used or have too much of. And, I mean, <clears throat> in the long term, it's probably the wisest thing to store everything and only use it for prospects because that will give you the most profit. But, you know, I gotta assign some value to having a more powerful ship. It holds more space, it holds more crew, more health, etc., etc. There's definitely value in that, too. So if I sell this stuff, just sell it normally, not for a prospect, I can get a bunch of money and have enough to buy a ship. Because if you're at... New Winchester, Victoria Market, you can sell any of that stuff. It's just usually not worth it all that much because it's better to save it for a prospect. But since it's stuff that I got mostly from bargains and things like that, I do still get a profit. So if I sell, like, I mean, I got 24 barrels of unseasoned hours. If I sell, I don't know, say 18, leaving me with 6. Um, I haven't needed bronze woods in a while and they're worth a lot, so if I sell all of those, 2,500 coin. That's 6,200 sovereigns. It is time to buy a ship. Now I just need to decide which one. We have the Pelinor class trader or Bedivere class escort. Trader is focused more on storage space, hold space, of course, as you'd probably expect. Let me go through the stats and just figure this out, figure out which one I want. I think I have a pretty good idea on which one I want and what attachments I want to buy, but I, I think I'm just going to buy it first and then figure out the exact attachments later. Um, I'm going to go with the trader. So it's between the escort or the trader. They're both the same amount of money. Both of them are pretty much better in every way. The escort is literally the same or better in every way. Better fuel efficiency, significantly better health, an extra armor slot, which would lead to even much better health. Um, but the trader has a couple advantages. It also has a modest bump to fuel efficiency. It has a little bit less room for people. But it has a significantly better, bigger hold, significantly more health, all the same attachments, but it also has an extra auxiliary slot, which I think is super important. I really want that extra slot. And we actually using that extra slot, we can overcome this crew deficiency and actually make us have more crew than our original ship. So, gonna go with the trader. One thing I'm really curious about is how does a new ship affect heat? Or does it affect it at all? Because I like I would assume that a better ship would be less prone to overheating when you're firing your guns or using your thrusters or anything like that. But it, it doesn't say anything about that whatsoever in the stats or in the description. So I guess we'll just see. I'm assuming there's probably a few things that aren't directly in the stats. Like, I'm assuming the trader might be a little bit slower than a more lean vessel like the escort. Or maybe it turns slower or something like that. I mean, I doubt that this thing has the exact same combat capabilities as the escort. Seems unlikely. All right, my first new ship. Name my locomotive. Oh. All right, so I asked my wife what I should name it. See if we could come up with something uh, Pride and Prejudice-y since the character Elizabeth is named after Elizabeth Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. And she came up with Fitzwilliam. It was either that or Darcy. And Darcy, I think, is just too... It's a little bit too on the nose, because I think people know the name Darcy a lot more than Fitzwilliam. So, we are now proud members of the Fitzwilliam locomotive. Oh. Oh, now that I bought one, it just, uh, like, added in a new one. Interesting. Trade for can actually get money if I, I could trade back down. 
Or I could do a side swap for no money? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I, I pressed this just to see. Like, make sure that it was not going to cost anything. Can I not close this? Uh. Um. Sure. Sure, we'll do that. And then just trade back to this. Yeah. That scared me. Okay, now we're back on the Fitzwilliam. Hmm. So how about this spatchcock reclaimed locomotive? A scrappy little engine welded together from bits and pieces of other less fortunate scrappy little engines. It has really good uh, energy efficiency. Decent amount of people. Is this, is this just my old one? This is my old one, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is. Way to insult my original ship. I guess it was pretty bad, wasn't it? Let's buy some attachments. So... I think I'm gonna get rid of the pneumatic mining array. I think I'm gonna use both of these for upgrades. So we have one bridge and two auxiliary slots to use. Okay, the bridge slot is an easy one. There's only two things here that can possibly use it, and one of them I can't use. Sensible plumbing requires hearts at 25 plus. Don't have that, so I'm gonna go for cramped quarters. Basically, this one is just an upgraded version of that. Plus six crew versus plus four. Additional crew quarters squeezed in wherever you can find the space. Best recruit only the most flexible or at least uncomplaining crew members for a while. Let's stick that in. All right, now we can hold 12 instead of 10 crew like our original. So now it's actually upgraded in literally every way at this point. I'm just thinking about that large expedition. Requires 10 people. Do I really want to travel with only two crew? God, I don't, but I mean, it's possible. I might just do it. Um, okay, auxiliary slots. Just the ship itself already has an upgraded hold. But man, I could always use more hold space, you know? Let's go all in and buy the best hold upgrade I can get. The Wit and Vinegar Winch and Pulley. Costs 1,160. But it's an auxiliary slot thing. Requires mirrors at 25 plus, which I have. It gives me eight more hold space, which is... Oh my god, I'm going to have... Is this going to be more than double my original space? Uh, That's going to be 26? 26 hold space. I originally had 12, 24. Yeah, it's going to be more than double my original hold space. That's going to change a lot, actually. I can just kind of bring stuff with me, just in case. At that level of hold space. It's damn expensive, though. Now, what to do with this other auxiliary slot? I guess I could put the pneumatic mining array back in. Oh, right. This is what I was going to do. I was going to get the Tier 2 Cozy Cabins. So plus four more quarters requires veils at 25 plus, which I have, and it goes in on an auxiliary slot. The only increased crew quarters that goes in an auxiliary slot. This one goes in bridge, and I think the other one does too. Yeah. With extra full down bunks and some careful shift scheduling, you can squeeze a few more in. It, it will be snug, but that keeps the cold at bay. <laughs> I feel so bad for my crew. I like how they spin it with the name Cozy Cabins, and then the description is like, yeah, they're going to be miserable. I'm lower on money than I'd like to be. I think I might sell a few more things, but man, 16 crew, I could definitely do a large expedition. What's the minimum safe... The minimum safe, like, running amount of crew on this ship? I still don't know where to see that. I do want a bit more money. Let's actually go ahead and sell the rest of the barrels of unseasoned hours. Another 480. A bit over a thousand. Yeah, that's good. Because I also need to buy repairs and more crew at this point. Let's go do that. Thirty sovereigns. And higher on crew. Can I get uh recruit up to four to eight? Does that mean it varies between four and eight? 
Yes, that didn't get us to max, actually. Got five crew. You have to wait 15 days to be able to hire more. So if I do a large expedition and lose my people, I'll be left with three crew, which is not good, but it's something. I think it's still doable. And maybe I can recruit some more crew other places. I'm not exactly sure where. Oh. Oh, you know what? Um, Magdalene's actually... There's, I, I can try to recruit some of the crew there at Magdalene's. At that uh, weird market that people set up, that like black market selling captain's possessions who have been in treatment for a very long time. I guess they're selling crew as well, because <laughs> the crew has nothing to do there and they just want to, you know, do their job on some sort of a ship. Yeah. And that's along the way, back to Trader's Wood. Okay. I have an obscene amount of storage space. That just feels like... Do I just bring stuff with me just for the fun of it? Uh, I could bring the mining drill. So if I get to a port, I can install it if I wanted to. Would I? Is there any chance I'd want to do that? It's not like mining's super important. It's cool. It's nice to do, but... I value extra hold space and extra quarters more. God, look at how much I can hold. I just casually... Have ten fuel and seven supplies. That's absurd. Yeah, I didn't think there is anything that I wanted to bring with me just in case I need it. Um, pane of stained glass can be good if tears super high because you get that whole like broken glass thing. But I mean, my tears zero percent. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm gonna bring extra fuel down there because I know that they don't actually sell fuel, only supplies at Trader's Wood. So I'm gonna head down there. But before I cut, let's try this thing out. Let's see how it looks how it maneuvers. Let's see if the heat is different. Man, this thing is big. Feels, feels chunky. Listen to it go. Seems to turn at about the same speed. Doesn't seem like it's super sluggish or anything. Seems to dodge about the same amount. Feels like it accelerates pretty well. I don't know about the top speed. It feels, uh, I don't know, about the same. Seems fine. All right, let's shoot and see how the heat is. I really hope I have a higher capacity for heat. Oh, I don't. Okay, I mean, that's totally fair for something that's not meant for combat. I just wonder if the other one meant for combat would have more heat capacity. Because that's like the major limiting factor on my ability to do damage in combat. But maybe all the boats have the exact same heat, so the only thing you can really upgrade is just buying better weapons. Anyway, um, I'll come back when I'm at New Magdalene, see if I can hire some more crew. Got a homestead along the way. A humble homestead whose owners, despite their ragged sleeves, insist on inviting you in. Trade salon suit gossip for supplies. Don't really need supplies, but I mean... Saves a bit of money. Reduce terror. Don't need that. Um, yeah, I'll share gossip from civilization. Your host is desperate to hear news from New Winchester and London. The scandals, the fashions, the feuds, they listen intently like an avaricious relative at the reading of a will. When you leave, you discover a generous bundle left on the footplate of your engine. Oh, hello. Let's do our first fight in this thing. We have a marauder. Yeah, this thing maneuvers fine. Captain's cabin. Some more juicy gossip. I love how you can... I love how they did like a faux kind of 3D effect. Because obviously everything in this game is just 2D layers. But if you look at the way the ship... Like the, the front big bulbous thing right here on the ship. 
when you go side to side, it's like a parallax kind of effect. Like it looks kind of 3D. Giving it some dimension to it. Oh, is this the peacock wind? Oh no. That might make it hard to get to the trader's wood. Speaking of, how come the trader's wood doesn't have a name? It's not the Somerset camp, surely. That's not the name of it, it's trader's wood. Right, it would show up as this very big name like all the others, but this one doesn't have it. Weird. Let's buy some more fuel, since I know I need to use it for my expeditions, and again, I can't buy it at trader's wood. We're at Magdalene's right now. And let's see if we can get more people. Or crew. I think it's at the keepsake market. Mm, yes, recruit crew from the market. Their old captain is being treated. They find themselves stuck here indefinitely. Gained one crew. Your new crew shuffle aboard and pick their bunks, leaving their old captain in the caring hands of Magdalene's finest. It's technically desertion, but a kind few will object to. Ah, I guess I can only do one thing every once in a while. Okay, so when I do a large expedition, I'll have four people left over. That's not great, but I think that's workable. I think we have a marauder down here. Mm-hmm. Dang, they're pretty fast. Well, I guess let's leave him be, then. Hey, it's the 31st of December. It's about to be next year. It's about to be 1906. I feel like something... Is something big gonna happen when it gets to next year? Maybe nothing, but... I know I'm still I know I'm still waiting for the Jubilation Day celebrations to meet my to meet my old friend, the Earnest Agitator. But I don't actually know when the Jubilation Day ceremonies are. Like, I hope I don't miss it. Well, date didn't change, that's okay. Let's Go on the expedition. Well, actually, let's check out the parting glade first. Anything here? Oh, right. Port report. Which, actually, I think I forgot to do at Magdalene's. Whoops. Yeah. Alright, let's prepare for a large expedition. Uses two supplies and two fuel. And ten crew. A sizable contingent of your crew volunteers to follow you into the wood. Packs are hoisted onto shoulders, rations divided and sensibly stored in little tubs. We're with you, Captain, a stout signaler tells you. Right, we're going to the Giggling Place. Which sounds like a name of a very cheesy horror movie. The sigils on the scythe suggest it was connected in some way. You're sure the name, however, is an error of translation. Back to the forest. Once again, the scholars wave cheerily as you prepare your crew for another venture under the whispering boughs of the trader's wood. It begins to pour. This gray sky is angry. Your crew look desperate to make camp, and progress will be slow over sodden ground. Perhaps this is an opportunity to recover some of your strength. Rest, recover your strength, less risky option, 100% chance of success. I guess we have to, it's either that or just leave. Oh, reduced our terror. And got some fuel back. A navigator discovers a hollow, a hollow way running through a vast copse of blackwood. You can set a watch at both ends and light a fire without being seen from elsewhere in the wood. Your crew stay up late, swapping stories of old rulers and their various ends. Your sleep is dreamless as death. 
Is that blissful or disturbing? Dreamless as death. Long shadows move through the silver trees ahead. There's a mournful howl. Someone sounds hungry. A stoker tries to joke. A low growling comes from behind you. The beasts have your scent. Draw them out. 53% chance or hide. 100% chance, yes. Better safe than sorry. It's not the date that it was. Oh, now it's January 1st, 1906. You slip under the eaves of a copse of white trees, pale as a corpse's flesh. Slowly, silently, you creep under the canopy. You hear the occasional crunch of bone or branch as your pursuers enter the wood after you. Eventually, the pursuit tails off. You find your crew again on a hill overlooking a bog. The ground gives way to a bog, gray and fetid as a newly slain corpse. Burps lazily. Oh, this. so this is the one we've already been to. Cross it or search for another route. Search for another route. 68% chance. Ooh, failure. What does that do? The woods extend for miles, but so too does the bog. It's hours before you find a passable clearing. A glade of emerald hue nestled between a copse of silver trees that shivers and sigh. That shiver and sigh like consumptives. Your crew follow your lead, hanging close by your torchlight. You keep up a count, checking the numbers of your crew as you go. Not everyone leaves the silvered wood. Another crew member lost. So I guess that means I'm not going to get as many back as came into the place. It doesn't just instantly end the thing, that's good. Enter the giggling place. A shaded dell below a steep and cruel hill. Bright laughter emanates from within the shaded dell before you. Great. I guess the name wasn't a mistranslation. The Unquiet Grave. Within the dell, the laughter becomes cacophonous. Your crew must cover their ears as you press forward through the dripping undergrowth. White ferns whisper as they brush against your heads, your hands. Ahead, you can hear the, the lowing of beasts. The air is cold as the grave. Entering the regent's grave, beware, you are in the giggling place. You inch forward as the laughter crescendos, washing over you. A copse of trees, gray as a rainstorm, lies ahead. It blocks the rest of the dell from sight, but it is the only way forward. Go alone or send your crew ahead. Spare your crew whatever laughs at you from behind shadowed trees. Or you cannot afford to risk yourself. Mockery won't make you reckless. Let's go alone. I, yeah, Elizabeth is... She's brave. Stolen speech. Your crew are loyal and protest, but the relief is palpable. You stride through the trees, the distant starlight dappling their gray leaves silver. You're greeted with laughter as bright and insistent as a blade at the throat. It emerges from the dell, which descends to a gap in the trees. Gained a vision of the heavens. A canopy of dripping leaves conceals what lies ahead. Laughter high and mirthless can be heard very close by. You must go forward. Enter the hollow. Voices echo from within the cleft in the earth. A prize claimed. At the very bottom of the dell is a brook. The water babbles and chuckles, murmurs and giggles. A bronze seal gleams just under the surface. As you reach to take it, three faces are reflected in the water next to yours. You're being watched by a three-headed fox, the size and color of a polar bear. It speaks, but with your voice, your vocal pattern stolen in service of its speech. Mourn not the wild trees, nor the slain servant. Open the silent barrows. The fox flees into the wood. Your throat aches. Mourn not the wild trees, nor the slain servant. Open the silent barrows. Whoa. That just did a lot. We just lost one from everything. One mirror, one heart, one veil, one iron. Got most of our crew back. 
Mourn not the wild trees nor the slain servant. Open the silent barrows. Well, I hope they know what to do with that. The paleographer. Ask them about the Barrows of Silence. The name of the Barrows was told to you in the woods. Evidence shifts. The paleographer paces his tent. Animals that speak? Oh, that doesn't fit. What will I say to the Senate? His voice catches. I will not just give up on Charlemagne. He rifles through his papers. Uh, perhaps we will find more useful evidence in these barrows. We did find a reference to Quiet Grave on an old tablet, written in the correspondence. It must be the same place. It was described as the place deeds were made. Ah! He finds his notes and makes a mark on your map. So, so far I think they've all been of medium difficulty, right? At some point they've got to get harder. Let's see how hard the next one is. Oh, I can't even see until I prepare for a large expedition, which I don't know if I want to do. That's going to take ten crew. I have two left over if I lose everybody. But come on, what are the chances I'm going to lose literally everybody? Like, something went wrong once, I failed something, and I lost two out of the ten crew members. You get a bit of leeway. Yeah, it's probably fine. But I think I'm going to end the episode here. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go to the Barrows of Silence.